For, for context, I'll share that Prime's first 10 years were defined by building our first investment vertical, um, which focused on the earliest stages of company formation. And um, we did that across three phases. So from 2014 to 2018, we funded one company at a time. We call that our syndication phase. Um, from 2018 onward, we, we um, had Prime Impact Fund. And then from 2021 forward, we had Azola. So those are syndication, Prime Impact Fund, Azola. The experiment that we were running with syndication is we just wanted to um, kind of find the boundaries of what we're allowed to do with charitable capital, catalytic capital. Uh, we funded 10 companies during that phase. We mobilized 20 four million dollars and worked with 54 different philanthropic organizations we just learned so much um, for prime impact fund that was a 52 million dollar seed fund that was 100 percent catalytic and the experiment there was you know can we aggregate a meaningful amount of impact first capital in a blind pool in this cause area and then for azola the experiment is um, can we have a catalytic function that looks a lot like Prime Impact Fund combined together with a non-charitable function? So we call it the catalytic sleeve and the full cycle sleeve. And will that advance Prime's nonprofit interests even further in terms of the management of the portfolio? Um, so that's just a little bit of history. We've had the same three underwriting criteria across all three of those phases. So the first is a very, very high impact threshold. Each company has to promise at least half a gigaton of CO2 equivalent emissions reduction potential cumulatively by 2050. Um, there has to be a very strong case for additionality. Um, what are the reasons that this company might struggle to raise sufficient financial support without us? And then the third, I think of um, as the bridge to somewhere, <laughs> is there a path to commercial scale and therefore a path to the impact that Prime is interested in, in terms of the commercial potential of the business and its ability to, to graduate from additionality and um, crowd in commercial investors. And so, Lori, when you ask about transformational change and examples of that, I think there's three levels of transformational change. There's the portfolio company level, there's the fund level, and then there's also the catalytic capital field building level. So on the portfolio company level, we have 33 portfolio companies across those three phases, and 30 of them are still alive <laughs> for now, um, although we expect most startups will eventually fail, especially given the stage that we're investing in and the risk-taking approach that we all know philanthropy must take. Um, and from a portfolio sense, we only need one company to succeed in order for Prime's venture capital vertical to have gigaton scale impact. Of course, we are hoping and working to make sure that um, we have more than one impact success stories. But one example that I can give from Prime Impact Fund is a company called Lilac Solutions. Um, <clears throat> Lilac has um, kind of a vast improvement for our global lithium supply chain, which is very needed for the, the coming global transition to electrified transport. Um, Lilac created an approach to lithium extraction from brine that could produce lower cost lithium and that is much lower environmental impact than alternative approaches. So Lilac solution injects the brine back into the ground rather than using evaporation ponds and evaporation ponds can deplete groundwater and harm the communities who live and work nearby. Um, so I in terms of crowding in and grad crowding in other investors and graduating from needing prime lilac just announced its 145 million dollar series c round a few weeks ago after prime invested 1.2 million in 2018 so that's that's kind of the <laughs> the path that we're that we're looking for can you can you say tell us what the valuation the change in valuation from your investment to theirs is oh. is that a no offhand 
I don't know offhand, but I can I can maybe send in notes afterward. <laughs> um, evaluation in Prime's mind is comes in the form of emissions reductions realized. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Uh, so um, just going back to those three levels, the second level was like the fund level and um, a Zola management company uh, we spun out in order to uh, to implement a Zola fund one, which is that kind of blended structure that I mentioned earlier. And so on a fund level, it is transformational to us that a Zola management company is a majority female led emerging manager that successfully closed its first fund um, more than $30 million over our upper $200 million target. So the full fund size is $239 million. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's it's great. Incredible. Um, and the third level of catalytic capital field building, you mentioned some of these numbers in your intro, Lori, but um, we've now worked with 256 different philanthropic organizations and 78 of them had never used recoverable grants or program related investments before. Um, so there's, I think there's 86,000 private foundations in the U S and that doesn't count donor advised funds and corporate giving programs and family offices that might not be using a private foundation, but uh, so we have a lot more to do, but as kind of an early measure of transformational change, it feels, it feels really good to have, that many people entrust us and feel comfortable doing something that they've never done before. Um, and I'll say that over the next 10 years, our ambition is to replicate what we've done to con both continue building our venture capital practice, but by 2033, have at least four vertical investment teams cyclically raising funds of different flavors, kind of each one purpose built around an acute capital gap in climate change, like whatever is the most dire in their area of expertise in the moment. 